Welcome to Air Academy Associates series on using SPC Excel. In this short video clip, we are going to talk about and address the use of a graphical tool called a Pareto chart. We'll start out by talking about what is a Pareto chart and why would one want to use it. Then we'll jump into the software and show you how to construct one and to customize it to your liking. A Pareto chart is a bar chart where the bars are sorted in descending order and it displays the frequency of occurrences of various categories of interest. The names of the bars on a Pareto chart will be qualitative, not quantitative like they are in a histogram, where the bars are labeled as numerical intervals. The vertical axis on a Pareto chart can also depict other metrics such as cost or cycle time in addition to frequency or counts. Some examples of Pareto charts might be the counts or frequency of medication errors by type of error or by reason of error. Another might be the counts or frequency of patient falls by location of where they occurred. Another might be the cycle times by process step. Another might be the cost spent by surgical supply type. A Pareto chart helps us answer questions such as what type of error happens most frequently? What process steps take up the majority of time? What a Pareto chart does is helps us focus. It helps us prioritize. And that alliterative effect, prioritize and Pareto, go hand in glove together. So just remember the PP connection. We use a Pareto chart to help us prioritize. So let's take an example of a team that was tasked to reduce the number of medication errors and they reviewed their records over a certain period of time and they showed that 114 errors were recorded over a certain period of time and the frequency of each type of error was recorded. These are errors or reasons for the medication errors. So the reasons include illegible orders, dispensing errors, calculation errors, etc. as you can see on the table on the left. And the second column denotes the number of times they recorded an illegible order or a dispensing order and so forth. So there's two columns here. The leftmost column gives the category of interest. The rightmost column tells you the frequency or the number of times that category occurred. So when we go to the Pareto chart in SPC Excel, which is really easy to get, you just highlight your data and then you select from the analysis diagrams menu, the Pareto chart. And all of this comes from the Sigma Zone ribbon. Once we've highlighted our data, as shown here, the Pareto and select Pareto chart, we will be asked for where is your data stored or where do I get the data? If we've already highlighted it, you can just click on next. If we haven't highlighted it, this is the place where you click and then you highlight your data. The next user interface window that you will get after clicking on next will show you different options for the bar type. There are three different options. 2D means a two-dimensional bar with the cumulative line, with the cum line. That's what's currently checked. If you don't want the cum line and still want 2D bars, you click here. If you would like to see maybe a fancier little bit of a Pareto and three-dimensional bars, without a cum line, you click on this. So there are various options that we will go through when we uh, generate a Pareto diagram, and I will demonstrate those in the software. You do not have to have a cum line, but since the cum line is uh, checked here, and we click on finish, the Pareto diagram that you will see will have the cum line on it, as shown in the Pareto diagram here on the left. So you get really two different outcomes here. You get the Pareto chart, uh, how you want it customized on the left, and then there's another sheet that will be generated, which is called a Pareto report. It summarizes in biggest values to smallest values from a count, and it tells you the percentage of the total that that count represents. For each, in this case, we have six different groups or categories, and the Q line here is what we get is if we stack the first bar on the second bar, the cumulative 
uh, count will be up here, and that'll be around 75%. So that's really your 47 plus 28, and that's about 75. So you use this axis, vertical axis scale on the right to read the cumulative chart. You read the count chart or frequency on the left for the height of the bars. Now, if we did not ask for a cumulative uh, chart and just a straight two-dimensional chart without the cumuline, you can see that the bars will be taller. Why? Because the chart does not have to leave space for the cumuline because basically in the cumuline, the last point is 100% and it is the sum of all the bars that are shown. So uh, you get a little bit bigger chart when you go without a cum line, but for some purposes, some customers that you might be willing to brief on a Pareto, you may want the cumulative line in there. So let's go to the software and take a look at a data set to generate a Pareto chart. I have just opened an Excel spreadsheet that has two different types of formats that the Pareto chart in SPC Excel will accept. The first one you've already seen in an example, and that's the two column format, where we have, in this case, looking at the location of falls in a nursing home, for example. Uh, the location could be the commode, it could be the hallway, the bedside, and somebody has already kept track of the number of falls we've had at the commode, at bedside, and so forth. So, we highlight our data, come up to Sigma Zone, go to Analysis Diagrams, and this time we are going to click on Pareto Chart. And it will ask, is that the source of our data? Since we've already highlighted it, we can click through this, and here's our Pareto Chart. Now the default setting that I have right now is a 2D bar chart, that is the, the bars are in two dimensions, and we do have the cum line. So this is a little easier to see than the one on the uh, PowerPoint slide, you can see that this point right here is the sum of the height of this bar plus the height of this bar. Together, they account for more than 70% of the total. So the uh, Pareto diagram and the cumulative chart give you some interesting ways of looking at the data. Again, the cum line is read off of this axis, vertical axis scale, where the frequencies are read off of this particular scale on the left-hand side. But you can change this. If you don't like the cum line, click on that. Uh, obviously, your bars now take up more space in your chart. They become bigger. Maybe that's easier to see. And then if you like the 3D bars, which will look just like this, but give you kind of maybe a more sophisticated look, depending on what you like to look at. Now, the gap width is the gap between the bars. You can change that. You can get the bars closer together, or you can spread them out. The default is at 100, but obviously, if you click down on that, the bars become uh, thicker. They don't actually become closer together. They become thicker, but it appears that they are closer together. Uh, the groups, we only had five groups here, but I want to show you something. Uh, in this case, if we went to four groups, the fourth and fifth bars together will constitute a new class called other. Now, you would only use this if you had, you know, like 10 or more groups where a lot of the, group, the, the bars will we be way down in the noise level here. Uh, but um, if we go to four, that's the total number of groups that will be shown. But since we originally had five groups or five different categories, uh, the fourth and fifth one will be combined together into a new category called other. So let's go back to the 2D bars and you can see this. And uh, this is the one I kind of like because it's a plain, plain chart with uh, the bars being very big on your chart. Now you can save these settings as the default. Uh, you can also look at the bars in an ascending way. And uh, let's go back to the five categories here, which was the original one. You can save this, but uh, in a Pareto, a Pareto is, de is designed to show you the bars in descending order, although you have the option to flipping that to ascending bars if you care to. And you may find an application for that as well. So we have five bars. We're going to go on to the next user interface window, and this will allow you to change 
the title and type in the title you'd like. And this is the, the frequency of falls versus location of fall. Now I press enter and I get a new title up there. The group now, we probably would like to change that to what these different categories represent, which is the location of fall. So when we do that, we have now properly annotated the horizontal axis here. And again, a Pareto is a bar chart for non-numerical categories. Bedside, hallway, commode, shower tub area, off unit. These are examples of non-numerical or qualitative types of bars. So at this point, uh, you can create a Pareto or you don't have to. I would leave that check. The default is checked because I'll show you that in a second. So we finish now. There's our final Pareto right there, but you also have a sheet down here called the Pareto Report. Let me slow that up a little bit so you can see it. Uh, you have the different locations, in this case, uh, the groups, the counts, and you have the percent of total, uh, which is a nice sorted way from biggest to smallest, uh, from count and also percentage. So the bedside uh, falls, uh, accounted for 47.5%. Hallway falls were next in line at 23.8% and so forth. And that's just the mirror image of your Pareto. And of course, uh, if you wanted the cumulative, you could show that as well. Now, going back to our original sheet, uh, what if you were just having somebody who, uh, who uh, recorded a fall say, oh, that was by the commode. So they type commode in. And maybe shift two had a bedside fall. Shift three maybe had a hallway fall. So this is freeform format, and you can highlight this as well and uh, do the Pareto from the freeform. So this is the second type of format that the uh, SPC Excel Pareto chart option will allow you. But you're going to get the same thing here if we go to Sigma Zone, go to Analysis Diagrams, and ask for the Pareto chart. It will give us the same thing. You have the same options, uh, 2D bar without cumline, 3D bar. Uh, you can change the number of groups in that, uh, but in this case, we're not. We're just going to leave it as is. We will have a report down here as well, but it's the same data as we had before. Now, one caution with the freeform formatting. These have to be identical. For example, what if I came in here and I typed that wrong? I said shower instead of tub area. I typed rub because R is right next to T. Yeah. Uh, typing area. Uh, and now, if we do the Pareto, you are going to see a new category called shower rub. And uh, so the point I'm trying to make is if you use the free form Pareto uh, format, uh, you probably uh, will run into some typos, but you'll, you'll catch those as very small classes uh, down here on the Pareto. So shower rub now is uh, one of your new classes. And of course, that's a typo. And you go back to Pareto chart. Uh, uh, let's finish on this. Now we have six classes. Before we had five. And uh, if you look at your Pareto chart, we had seven shower tub falls before. Now we have six, and we have one shower rub fall, which makes no sense, obviously. But the bottom line is, uh, in your data, you have two data formats that you can use for um, for uh, SPC Excel's Pareto chart option. It's the two column format where the category or the group is on the left and the count numbers are on the right. Or you can do it in a free form manner like this where people just type in something and then you want to accumulate the results. So that is uh, our uh, Pareto chart. A very simple tool but a very valuable tool for helping us prioritize the different categories that we might be interested in. So thank you for joining us uh, on the Pareto chart, and have a good day.